Now, there's another kind of equation called the proportion that we do use a lot as well. Um, and proportions have to do with ratios. So a ratio compares quantities by division. Um, we can express it as a fraction in words or using a colon. Um, for instance, let's say we have a group that contains 60 women and 30 men. So you have 90 people all together. Well, the ratio of women to men, we could write as a ratio a couple different ways. As a fraction, we would write this as 60 to 30. And you do want to simplify. So that would be two to one. If you want to write it in words, we write it as two to one or using the colon two to one this way. So those are three different ways that we write our ratios. Now in mathematics, we tend to use the fraction form the most because we know how to work with fractions. Um, and so we're going to end up sticking with this right here. Now a proportion is a statement that two ratios um, are, that equation, are equal. And we can solve proportions in different ways. So there's lots of different ways to solve proportions. If you have another method that you prefer to use instead, absolutely go ahead and use that. Um, there's one way that we can solve that always works though. So I'm gonna show you that way here. And it's called cross multiplication or cross products. Um, and basically it says if you have two ratios that are equal, then if you multiply them across this way and this way, then those products are equal as well. Um, so then you have sort of like a regular equation to solve instead. So let's try it out. All right, so here are my proportions, one, two. And then to solve here, I'm gonna multiply this way. So I'm gonna do 63 times five equals, and then we multiply it this way, seven times X. Now, I know some of this you can do in your head. So if you feel comfortable doing some of this work in your head, like um, seven times X, you could just write a seven X. That would be completely fine as well. Um, but if you're stuck, just take that extra step and write it out. So let's see, 63 times five is 315. Seven times X is just seven X. And now you should have a pretty simple equation to solve. So our last step here is gonna be to divide to get rid of the seven on both sides. So again, I'm just using that same solving technique. The nice thing with these is that you don't usually have, it's not too, too complicated once you multiply, which tends to be nice. And when I go ahead and divide, 315 divided by seven is 40. And again, I'll just do one more check so you can see how it works. Now you just go back to your original problem. So 63 over 45 is seven over five. So you can check it also by cross multiplying if you want to. So you would get 63 times five equals 45 times seven. And you should see you get 315 equals 315. So it does check out. Uh, another way you could check is to actually look at the multiplication between the ratios. So notice that seven times nine is 63 and five times nine is 45. So if you see that same change as well, uh, whether it's a multiplication change or a division change, it doesn't matter, then that also checks uh, that you have the same fraction or ratio, because basically you're just simplifying. This is the simplified version of this one. All right, let's do one more here. So I'm gonna go this way, 20 times X equals, and then we're gonna go this way. So 30 times, and be careful here, that denominator is X minus 10. So I am gonna use parentheses there because the whole thing is being multiplied by the 30, which means that we're gonna end up distributing that 30 to both pieces. So on the left, I have 20 X. And then on the right, I have, let's see, 30 X minus 300. Now I do want my variables together. So I have to get my like terms together. I'm gonna to bring my variables to the left. So I'm gonna subtract 30 X from both sides. Negative 10x equals negative 300. Again, watch those signs. There's a minus there, which is a negative. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 10. And I get x equals 30. So our solution set here, again, I've been using this kind of more straightforward notation, but if you need to write it as a set, your solution set here is 30. Your solution set here is 45 and so on. 
Now that's how you solve your basic proportions, but proportions are really nice, particularly for real world applications. So I wanna do some of those examples here too. All right, so here's what we know. It says the property tax on a house when an assessed value of 480,000 is $5,760. And we want to determine the property tax on a house with an assessed value of 600,000. And we are assuming the same tax rate, which is important, right? So it's the same tax rate um, for both houses. So they likely are in the same town, neighborhood, something like that. Um, usually your taxes vary per the town that you live in. Now we're going to use a proportion here to set this up. And the thing with proportions is you can almost do whatever you want as long as you keep your ratios consistent. So you're thinking about units here. So for instance, one way to set it up is to compare the assessed value with the tax. Uh, actually. Yeah. assessed value um, with the tax. So for our first example, our assessed value was 480,000 and the tax was 5,760. For the second house, the assessed value was 600,000 and we do not know the tax there. So I can use an X to hold that place. So notice that I'm just being consistent, which is really important. So I'm going to use the assessed value on top and the tax on bottom. And then this here is house one. And this here is house two. So again, we're just staying in order. So I have my values the same. Both the assessed values are on top. Taxes are on bottom. Here's my house one. Here's my house two. Now, I actually could have written this the other way. If I wanted to put the tax on top and the assessed value on bottom, that actually would be fine too. It doesn't matter. As long as I set them up consistently, it's okay. And then I can go ahead and use proportions here to solve. So I'm going to have 480,000 X. And then on the other side, I have 600,000 times that 5,760. All right, let's see what we get here we're going to get 480,000 X equals three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're looking at 3 billion, 456 million. Now my X is all by itself. I just need to solve it. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by that 4,080, uh, uh, 480,000, excuse me. And let's see, I get here 7,200. So the taxes for the $600,000 home are 7,200. Now, like I mentioned, this is one way you could set it up. There are other ways too. So the way your book does it, they use a very similar idea, but they put the tax on top and the assessed value on bottom, which is fine. So just that all of these values will be flipped. So you'd have the 5,000 on top here instead and the X on top here instead. That's okay as long as you're consistent. Um, there's even another way to do it. Um, although I like this way the best. This is kind of how I like to set things up. But you could even do it like this is you could compare the value to the value and then the tax to the tax. So here you're looking at the value. So this is house two in the top and this is house one in the bottom row. So it's another way you could do it too, is you have comparing value to value, tax to tax, but making sure you're consistent, house two, house two, house one, house one. So with proportions, you have a lot of wiggle room of how you set them up, as long as you are consistent. So again, I do recommend just writing your units out off to the side so that you plug everything in in the right spots. Let's try another one. Wildlife biologists catch, tag, and then release 135 deer back into the wildlife refuge. Two weeks later, 
uh, they observe a sample of 140 deer, 30 of which are tagged. Assume the ratio of tagged deer, um, sorry, I should say in the sample, hold for all deer in the refuge. And then we're trying to figure out how many deer are in the refuge. So this is a process called tagging. So what they do is they collected in one day 135 deer, they put tags on them, and then they let them go again. And they collect again later on, and they see how many were come in that are tagged. And you assume that the same ratio would exist out in the, um, I guess in this case, the wildlife refuge, right? Or the wildlife reserve. So if you, let's say get, I don't know, 10% of the deer back have tagged, then your original tagging of 135 deer is probably only 10% of the population. So we're looking at to see what's the ratio when we collect them a second time, which helps us estimate how many deer there could actually be out in the refuge. So let's look at this example. And we can kind of see how to set it up. Again, there's more than one way to set it up. So, all right, so the way your book does it um, is they set up the ratio like this. So they're comparing here the original number of tagged deer to the total number of deer. So the original number of tagged deer was 135. And the total number of tagged deer, we don't know. Uh, the total number of deer, excuse me, altogether, we don't know. And then we're comparing that to the number of tagged deer in the sample to the total number of deer observed. So in our sample, we had 40. Oh, sorry, 30 deer who were tagged, and we had 140 observed, okay? So notice what they're doing here. They're looking at your original on, um, so the original tagged on top, right? So we had 135 originally tagged, and then we collected 30 that are tagged now. And then we're comparing the totals on the bottom. So total deer in the whole park versus the total deer collected. So we're kind of doing an idea of original to total. So original tag to total as our setup here. Now we can go ahead and multiply that through by cross multiplying. So I have 30 times X and 135 times 140, 30X equals, now 135 times 140 is 18,900. And to solve, we're going to go ahead and divide by three. All right, and when we get there, we get 630. Now remember X represented the approximate total deer. So there are about 630 total deer in the refuge. So here again, the ratio was really just about comparing tagged to the total in both cases. But again, there's more than one way to set that up. I think this is probably the easiest way to do that is thinking about your tagged to your total in each case. So here you have the original thing about the whole population of deer, and then here you have your sample of tag to the total.